Hi, today we would be discussing about purple hibiscus written by Eddie Shea. I hope you would have read the novel. As you all know, Purple Hibiscus is written by the Nigerian writer Adishe and she was greatly influenced by Achebe. I'm sure most of you would have read quite a work, quite a lot of works by Achebe as well. Now, Adishe did not believe in single-handed stories. I'm sure you would have watched the TED talk uh, which I have sent you the link in the previous classes. And as she did not believe in single stories, she decided that she wanted to give multiple perspectives of Nigeria. And this multiple perspectives of Nigeria is what she's trying to bring about through the novel Purple Hibiscus. Now, as the name suggests, Purple Hibiscus. I'm sure most of you would have seen red hibiscus and not a purple hibiscus. So this was basically a hybrid variety which was found at Aunt Ifyoma's house. Now who is Aunt Ifyoma? Aunt Ifyoma is one of the major characters as mentioned in Purple Hibiscus. Now it is from Aunt Ifyoma's house that you can see Purple Hibiscus was brought into Eugene's house. Now who is Eugene? Eugene is a papa figure who is represented in this novel. Now, Eugene's children, they are Kambali and Jaja. Now, Kambali is very important for us as she is the narrator of the whole novel. We can see the novel through the eyes of Kambali who is just a 12-year-old girl. So it is Kambali who tells us as to what happens at Eugene's house, what happens at Aunt Ifyoma's house and what is, to with, what is to do with the purple hibiscus. So I did mention to you that you know red hibiscus was mainly found in the Igbo community as a novel uh, starts. You can see there's uh, quite a lot of red hibiscus which is being discussed and it is this particular flower which is brought uh, in the churches and which was uh, found in the church altar as well. And then when she goes uh, to Aunt Ifyoma's house, you can see that this purple hibiscus was in their garden. And she was so fond of this purple hibiscus that she brings this uh, 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 sapling of purple hibiscus and she brings it to Eugene's house. Now this is very important because there is a change in their perspectives once she is associated. She, I mean Kambali is associated with the purple hibiscus. Now, what are some of the major aspects of this particular novel? Now, religion. Religion is one of the major aspects of this novel. Now, we have two people out here. Father Amadi and Father Benedict. These are the two major people present in this novel who would directly deal with religion as far as this novel is concerned. They are two priests, one associated with Eugene's family and the other associated with Aunt Ifyoma's family. Now who is Eugene and who is Aunt Ifyoma? They belong to the same family. Eugene's sister is Aunt Ifyoma. I repeat, it's Eugene's sister who is Aunt Ifyoma. And Aunt Ifyoma is a professor at the university and she is also blessed with two kids. And Eugene with Beatrice, the silent spectator of this novel. Or you can also call her as Mama the papa and the mama of this family. Now, mama is a silent spectator of this novel, but you can see at the end of the novel, it is Beatrice or mama who comes to rescue their or her children. Now, Eugene and Beatrice, they are blessed with Kambli and Jaja. Eugene is a, a person who is 
not conventional in terms of his ideologies but definitely he is conventional with his religious attitudes and it is this conventionality which makes him quite violent in nature and it is this violence that you can see at Kambli's and Jaja's home. Now, and uh, I, 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 let me write this to you, domestic violence. Domestic violence as present in Eugene's and Beatrice's house or Papa's and Mama's house. Now, what is, what is to do with this domestic violence? Mama is actually the person who takes in all this violence. She is a silent spectator. She is suppressed. She is depressed. And until the end of the novel, she remains silent. Even at the last bit, even with the deed that she does, she remains silent. And because of this violence, Kambali and Jaja is affected. Kambali is also kind of silent, but she does try to uh, raise out her voice at certain point of time. But Jaja is totally opposite. Every time Papa brings about a violence at home, you can see that Jaja is the one who reciprocates. And this is what you can see in the Nigerian community, where it is the females in this community where they remain to be silent throughout. And it is this patriarchal power which, uh, which is foreshadowed in this novel as well. But remember, uh, I did mention to you about Adishe. She did not believe in single story. And as a result, she did not want to say that they were completely suppressed. They did have voices. And as a result, you can see that Beatrice reciprocates at the end of the novel. And she's breaking off the single story. She's bringing about multiple perspectives as well. So religion is one aspect where Papa is uh, totally conventional in his ideas with the aspects of religion. But he is totally for the society. People love him. People love him so much uh, that they look up to him. He has a newspaper called the Standard Newspaper. And this newspaper is also important because all the atrocities of the Nigerian community, the post-Nigerian effects or the post-colonial Nigerian effects are mentioned in the standard newspaper. And it is this newspaper that the society would love to look up to, where they would be uh, dealt with a lot of their uh, aspects, attitudes and their uh, social pressures as well. And as a result, he does have enemies as well. So enemies, little enemies outside and the major, I, I cannot call them enemies, they are uh, his children. But definitely you can see that there is a problem with Kambli and Jaja with respect to Papa's behavior at home. And Papa's behavior at home, as you can see, is a domestic violence, which in turn affects Kambli and all the more to Beatrice. Now there are certain um, symbolisms in this particular uh, novel. What are the symbolism or what are the symbols used in this novel? You can see that there is a lipstick, lipstick which um, Kambli mentions about. She sees the red lipstick on a female's face or the lips only when she comes to Aunt Ifyoma's house. She is not associated with such ladies in her environment, neither does she see her mother do it, nor um, it might be because of the religious conventionalities that they follow at home that she is not attributed to any of the ladies who wear such lipsticks. You can see that this, she, is, she sees this only when she reaches Aunt Ifyoma's house. And that is when she realizes there is a true identity for a female or for a girl. No matter how conventional beliefs that you have, that you are associated with, there is definitely an individuality, there is definitely an identity for a lady and that she realizes only when Aunt Ifyoma's, at Aunt Ifyoma's house. Again, Adishay's single story is, you know, crossed here because she brings about a very strong lady through Aunt Ifyoma 
through her novel. Adishe brings about through Aunt Ifyoma in her novel to show that there are other females in their society as well. Another major aspect that you can see here are the figurines. Now here the figurines are associated with Mama. Every time there is a violence at home, it, it would be one of her figurines which would be lost. Now just as the figurines, Mama is also very delicate. Very delicate, soft and suppressed. And it is this suppression, it is this delicate, uh, you know, delicate behavior, it is this softness of Mama is mentioned to us or is uh, shown to us through the figurines that Mama is associated with. So every time Papa comes home, every time there's a violence at home, you can see one of her figurines or one of herself is broken. Then yet another symbol that you can see here is the palms that they use uh, for the Palm Sunday. Remember, in the beginning of the novel, there is a violence which happens and the very first line of the novel starts with things fall apart. How does it fall apart? With Papa throwing about to the figurines because one of the palms was lying on the dining table. See, look how conventional he is. He could not relate a palm leaf on the table. He wanted everything to be you know, proper, clean, crystal clear and he could not take it and as a result he throws, um, you know, he throws stubs and you can see that the figurines are broken. It falls and it, it is uh, you know, completely in, shattered into pieces. And it is this palm which is uh, referred to as uh, the Palm Sunday and the palm leaves which are used on Palm Sundays, you can see that these leaves are a representation of hope and freedom. The palms which are used on Sundays, the palm leaves which are used on Palm Sundays brings to us Based on the Christian belief ideology, it, is, it shows us hope and it also shows us freedom. Okay? So it is this hope and freedom that Eddie Shea attributes at the end of the novel to each of her characters. So one way or the other, you can see that Father Amadi, Father Benedict, who is also you know, uh, associated with their religious beliefs, you can see that there is a cha there is a quite a lot of difference between both these priests. One who is uh, very stringent in his ideas about the conventional beliefs, and the other one who is totally open to ideas. Now, it is this openness which brings calmly into a total change of the whole world, and it gives her hope and it gives her freedom. So in a nutshell, if I can tell you that uh, Kamli and Jaja are raised up in an environment where they, are, uh, they have been seeing the domestic violence, they're not very happy, they're associated with their books and they live about because Mama is uh, a silent spectator and she's the one who raises her children. But you can see that there is a blood in the family which is Aunt Fiona or Papa's sister who lives um, in the university and she is also a university professor. Every time uh, uh, Aunt Ifyoma tells Papa to send her kids there, Papa does not agree to it. But at one point of a time you can see that there is a change in Papa's, uh, Papa's ideas and he says, okay, I can send my children and that is when Kambli and Jaja comes to Aunt Ifyoma's house. So when Kambli and Jaja comes to Aunt Ifyoma's house, you can see that they are quite shy in nature, they do not know how to behave, uh, they are not open to things and Aunt Ifyoma's children are also finding it quite difficult to associate with Kambli and uh, Jaja. You can see that slowly there is a gradual change with the interference of Aunt Ifyoma. And it is Aunt Ifyoma who gives them hope, who gives them freedom, who gives them life, who gives them multiple perspectives of a different environment that they've been used to all this while. And again, 
as i've already mentioned remember i told you at the at the uh, at the start of the session that the purple hibiscus was found at aunt ivioma's house and again when uh, this uh, purple hibiscus is seen in aunt ivioma's house kamli is totally attracted to it and you can see there is again a revival there is a hybrid quality in her and this hybrid quality which is a mix of two cultures the two cultures which means one that she was associated with her papa's family and the other one when she comes to aunt ifioma's house so it is this mixture of culture which brings us to the theory of hybridization so you can see that the entire novel is based on this major aspect of hybridization now what is hybridization hybridization is basically mixture of two cultures that as as present in this novel or, or as adisha explains it now if you can see that there are two cultures here as to papa and aunt, aunt ifioma the religious believes as to father amadi and father benedict the children uh, eugene's children and aunt ifioma's children in many things you can see that there is a hybrid culture which is present in this uh, in this particular novel then you can also consider this novel as a coming of an age novel as i have already mentioned kambli is a narrator of the novel and it is this narration of kambli and it is her life where she turns uh, into a mature person where she finds her freedom where she is hopeful of herself and she is also identified she finds her identity and therefore you can consider this to be a coming of an age novel again what you can see um, in these novels are it, this comes under a bildungs roman uh, genre so uh, it is uh, very well explained uh, through the narration and something else that you need to keep in mind again is a name kambli now what about the name kambli kambli in igbo means let me live kambli in igbo means let me live and isn't that what she has been trying to attain throughout the novel isn't that why it is considered to be a coming of an age novel isn't that why it comes under the bildungs roman novel i want to live exactly what beatrice her mama said as well exactly what she has been taught by aunt ifioma and she has been living and again you can see that at the end of the novel uh beatrice is the one who actually uh reciprocates to all the pressures that he that she's been handling so far and she kills her husband and it is jaja who goes to prison instead of her of his uh mother so you can see that there is a change because all these while you can see that jaja has been observing her mother who has been constantly under pressure who's been constantly uh, at the receiving end and he does not want uh, mama to be taken to prison but he takes uh, the particular guilt of uh, mama and he goes to prison and you can see that even at the end of the novel she is able to find her freedom she is able to reciprocate but she goes back into uh, you know a mental hysterical um sends again uh, towards the end of the novel so these are some of the major attributes that this novel uh, is explained and you also have to uh, look into the post colonial nigeria that is where this standard newspaper is uh, brought into attention you have the domestic violence versus silence silence as in uh, beatrice and many of the uh, characters out here and then someone else that we need to uh, remember about is papa's papa or the grandfather you also see uh, something which is very interesting is that papa cannot associate himself with his own father 
and as a result he does not allow his children to be associated with their grandfather and it is only when they come to aunt ifioma's house you can see as to how well kambli and jaja can associate themselves with their grandfather they have been missing all this while and it is this culture of uh, or the the igbo culture that they belong to is actually portrayed very well through the grandfather as you can read the novel as as you've read the novel you can also see that there are umpty number of uh, pages which uh, which is written in igbo uh, language as well where adishay wanted to uh, portray her community portray her culture portray her uh, language and so on so it is this portrayal is mainly um you know received for uh, received in the novel through the grandfather you can see as to how happy these children are when they come to aunt ifioma's house you can see as to how much uh, they enjoy gr their uh, grandfather and their association with the grandfather and they've been missing all this while when they were at papa's house and it is this again another hybrid culture that they can associate very well with when they come to aunt ifioma's house it is just as to how we go to our grandfather's house how we can associate with our grandparents and as to how we feel that we are loved uh, much more than when we are at home that's exactly the same concern that they get when they go to aunt ifioma's house and when aunt ifioma takes them to her uh, to her father in fact or to her or to their uh, grandparents so in a nutshell you can see that purple hibiscus a hybrid variety written by edishe bringing about hybrid cultures into this uh, particular novel where she breaks the single story line and she brings about multiple perspectives multiple perspectives in every aspects whether be it religion whether be the hopefulness the the identity uh, the symbols that are used the colonization whatever it is you can see that everything associated here in this novel has different meanings altogether that was adishay's number one aim she did not want people to see or believe in a story just on one or a single story basis but she wanted to tell everyone that there are multiple perspectives to a story not just a one sided story but there are multiple perspectives of a, a story so that is how kambli ends the novel where there is a, a tragedy which happens which i already mentioned a an ironical end you could say and this ironical end or whatever happens in the novel is finally the growth of kambli the narrator of the novel you see that she becomes or she finds her identity she is she become or she grows up to be an individual she identifies her personality and this identifying process is basically through multiple perspectives through different cultures that she could associate with and this hybridization or this multiplicity happens only when she is associated with aunt ifioma's uh, home and everybody that is surrounded with aunt ifioma uh so purple hibiscus is indeed one of the um best selling novels of adishe and one of the must read novels i hope uh, you have understood what this novel is in a nutshell please read through again and um uh, we hope to have further discussions um in in the next classes as well and um, so purple hibiscus a coming of an age novel and a bildungs Ro a roman uh, novel which deals with several themes from silence uh, or violence to a hopeful and a freedom associated environment that is what you have with uh, purple hibiscus a mixture a hybrid variety and this hybrid variety is what brings about life in this novel thanks to adishe for that thank you